Hello to you. Hi. Nice thanks. to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Welcome to Canada. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and, and first off, congratulations on this film and all the buzz it's been getting. Uh, uh, tell me how you first got interested in famine as a subject for a documentary. Yeah, well, I'm Australian, but my grandmother's Ukrainian. And I um, actually saw I saw an article about famine in a Australian newspaper, really a tabloid, crappy newspaper. I found it on the floor of a train. And there was a photo of Sasha, one of the feminist activists, naked with a sign that says, Ukraine is not a brothel. And I thought that was a really interesting way to protest. And I was sort of intrigued by it. There was a sort of a naivety to that image, but a strength as well. So when I was in Ukraine with relatives, I tracked them down and shot a protest in the Maidan. Uh, and yeah, and just kept shooting protests. And they liked what I was doing and invited me to stay. And I stayed for 14 months. Yeah. And, and Femin's tactics are considered controversial by some. Give me a sense of your first impressions. Were you sympathetic to their approach? Uh, yeah. I mean, I was fascinated by the contradictions in it. That, to me, that makes for an interesting film and an interesting kind of subject matter. Like, I, I, it's sort of, it's provocative. They are raising awareness, but at the same time, they are offending a lot of people. And often they're raising awareness using their own bodies and sexuality, and people question that. Um but, yeah, I, I, t I like their message, and I think that, you know, um, while their methods might be a little bit, you know, strange, um, at least they're, they're really trying to raise awareness about women's rights in Ukraine, and it's a topic that's not discussed enough. Feminism in Ukraine in general isn't really talked about. So I think they've changed, kind of changed that. They've got girls talking, and that's really cool. They've got girls talking and, and women talking. At the same time, as we learn early in the film, it's a very select group who are officially part of Famine, and at least at the time that you were making the film, there are some rules around how you have to look to be in famine. Did that surprise you? Well, yeah. So there's this, uh, I'm not sure if I should give away the ending, but there's this kind of uh, force, like there's people at, at, at the helm of this group that aren't really who you'd think they are. So you think it's a group of girls who are just sort of trying things out. But when I was there for a few months, I kind of discovered there's actually other people controlling this and manipulating this organization. And, and their rules were the sexier the girls are, the more photographers will get, the more press will get. So it did become a, a, a kind of a case where unattractive girls or chubbier girls or girls that didn't, weren't that comfortable with their bodies were kind of pushed out or felt like they couldn't be a part of the movement, which was a little sad. Um, yeah, and which so makes kind of, for a, a, a not much of an inclusive women's movement. No, it makes for it's hard to call it a feminist movement when it when they all look like Barbie dolls. So, Kitty, that perspective uh, that right now being naked is the only way Ukrainians will pay attention to women. Uh, this is echoed by some in your film. Do you think that's actually the case? Well, I'm not sure if it's the only way. There are other feminists working in that country and there's different ways of going about it, but it definitely is an effective way of getting attention and getting press and getting their message across. Um, but yeah, there are definitely other women. I met lots of feminists and women in Ukraine who are actively working for women's rights. Uh, but in, in a case of a, of, of a girl like Inna and a girl like these young girls where, who are just beautiful, I mean, they kind of can use their sexuality. They're taking their sexuality and using it as a weapon and using it to fight for what they believe in, and there's, there's something to be said. They totally get attention, for yeah. sure. And, and, and sometimes that message gets through with the attention. And look, we're talking about them right now, and you've made a documentary about them. So mm. you could argue that efficacy certainly has happened in, in, mm. in terms of getting the attention. The, the film is striking in its intimacy. I mean, you lived with members of Femin in their Kiev uh, apartment while making the documentary. This is always a tough one for a documentary filmmaker. Did you... Did you worry? How did you navigate the path of not getting too close to the subjects of this documentary that you're ostensibly, objectively trying to make? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, living with them was, was sort of essential to... I don't think we could have gotten the story and we could have told the story that we tell and sort of revealed the secrets without living with them. Like, I spent 14 months in a two-bedroom apartment with six feminine activists, so it was tiny and cramped, and so they... I mean, they came to trust me and we kind of loved each other. We're, we're like family. And then when, when I pushed them to sort of tell the story of, of this man, we'll call him Victor, who's kind of at the helm, I mean, they were reluctant, but I think they trusted me with the story and they trusted me to tell it right or correctly or in a way that didn't tear the movement down and in a way that they could have their own voices heard and move forward and become a stronger feminist organization. So all that's built on trust. And how did, have they seen the film? The girls, yeah, they were at our. Their, our we've premiered at Venice Film Festival, and we had seven topless women on the red carpet. With and us. how did they feel about the film? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, they they liked it. They were they were proud to get those stories out. A, a few of them cried a little after they'd watched it, but it was good tears. It was like, okay, we've told that. That was our history. We're moving forward. We're going to kind of become a stronger feminist movement. We're going to become more inclusive. We're going to change our ways and evolve. And, and they've, they've done that in the past year, and they're sort of expanding and becoming feminine international, and they've got little branches popping up everywhere. So. Okay, let me ask you. I'm not caught up on the last year, so I'll ask you about uh, what, what's happened in the last year. But going back to when you made the documentary, which mm. is uh, two or three years ago, in the doc we see they're a very small group. Mm. I mean, there's literally five or six of them, right? Uh, they don't seem to have ties to a broader women's movement or other feminist groups around the world, like, like for example, Pussy Riot do. And they don't always seem very clear on what they stand for. I mean, it sort of changes from protest. But is there any evidence that feminine is actually creating any social change? Oh, it's like they're not – it's tough. It's tough. I get asked that a lot. Is like, is, are there results? And the answer to that is that, well, I think nobody was talking about feminism in Ukraine for a really long time. It's sort of been a dirty word, and they've, mm. they've made it sexy again in some ways. So people are – like they're all over the television. They're all over the news. It's sort of – Young women know what feminism is, firstly, and they discuss it. And whether they're like the fact that people are outraged by their protests is interesting. They're sparking debate. They're getting people to talk about women's bodies. And that's the win. Just get, getting yeah, people talking it's about get, it. It's raising awareness, and that's their main goal: is getting just opening up people's eyes to what's going on, and and then hopefully that will affect change. All right. Well, one of the big reveals. I know this is a spoiler alert of mm. sorts for you, but it is kind of essential to the story. One of the big reveals in Ukraine is not a brothel. Is that the leader of Femme, at least at the time, was actually a man. This is, so, so tell us about Victor. What was your impression of him? Yeah, he's he's a scary guy. Um, no, I was probably there for about four months before I really understood exactly what his role was and the power that he had over the girls. He really did make pretty much all the decisions when I was there. And I, I slowly got to realize this, and it was very sad for me to sort of see this. He would be quite abusive with them and would scream at them. And in the, in the morning, they'd be all holding these banners saying, this is the new feminism. And I thought, how can they say that but have this guy scream it? And it was just, it completely blew my mind. And I sort of decided... I could either abandon the project if I didn't really believe in the movement anymore or I could find a way to get these girls, hopefully, I could see they were ready to move forward and hopefully I could capture that. Um, so, yeah, I stayed to try and get them to, yeah. Well, I, I mean, he's not just, a, a, um, you know, aggressive with them. He he plans the protests, even though women the women are, are told to pretend they're behind them and they seem afraid of him. Do you, do you have any sense of why they continue to work with him? He's really clever. He's really clever. And I think these women, they're so, in Ukraine, this kind of patriarchal culture is so entrenched. Like, they weren't even really aware that this was contradictory until they they finally got to travel around the world. Around the time when I was there, we did a lot of trips abroad and met a lot of feminists. Um, I was there. I have a cinematographer who works for me, and I yell at him and tell him what to do, and he's a boy. And they were always amazed by that relationship that we had. So I think it's that... Um, yeah, I think they were slowly learning, hang on, this isn't right. And we can't just stand out on the streets and fight against patriarchy. We've got to fight against it within our own organization. So it was a nice kind of moment that I caught in their history where they were stepping up and going, okay, we're going to change things and we're going to make it right. He, he makes this interesting point at one point. I mean, there's a very interesting revealing interview where you do with Victor, where he's defending his role with feminine and, and and acknowledging that he's leading this uh, this group of women and he says well there are paradoxes but he points out that you know Karl Marx was bourgeois for example but you know he was leading this workers revolution or at least trying to inspire it were, were you inspired were you inspired were you persuaded by any of his points ah oh, yeah <laughs> yes and no i mean i see victor as I don't know. He's sort of an egomaniac and he's got his own ideas about what he wants. I don't think he was after money or power or he was sort of, he really is, I mean, power definitely, but not money or, or like sex actually is what he gets accused of a lot. He just wants to sleep with them. But he really sees himself as a revolutionary and he really kind of, he spent a few years in jail and I think he, during the Soviet Union as an activist and read and read lots of Lenin, lots of Marx. And when he got out of jail, he was like, well, you know, I want to change the world. And But he, he's a young guy and he couldn't find anyone to listen to him. But what he found in this tiny village in Western Ukraine was a group of 16-year-old girls who were very impressionable and who he could 
you know, persuade to do crazy stuff. So, um, yeah, I think he's got these noble ideas. He wants to change the world, and this is sort of the way he's going about it. Might not he might have got a bit lost along the way in in his own kind of with his own narcissism and whatnot. But yeah, he's he, he's a really intensely fiercely intelligent guy who. Uh, yeah, I do. He's he's a bit mean. And uh, Ina has written that Famine has now broken free of Victor's leadership. Is that true? He's yeah. no longer in the picture. Yeah, I hope I I hope it's true. I've heard that Victor's no longer in the leader in the position of leader or even in the group at all. And I went to see Femme in France, which is where she's based now in Paris. And yeah, they're great girls. They're strong girls. They're all politically engaged and of all shapes and sizes. And it's really encouraging to see what she's built in Paris. Tell me about. Uh, so it's a very complex portrait that we see of feminine. On the one hand, we're um, clearly sympathetic to them. and On the other hand, there's all these contradictions and difficulties that kind of make us go, what do you mean that mm, some women can't join this group and there's a, a man leading it? And you know, So uh, w- tell me about the reaction you've received from audiences. What surprised you about the way people react to this film? Yeah, most people, I don't know, are pretty excited by it and they like the contradictions and like, they like seeing the different sides of feminism and it's sort of throwing up what is feminism and what is kind of the male, ro- a male role in feminism and this idea of patriarchy. Um, but the strongest kind of reaction I get is from feminists who just tear these girls down immediately. They won't even watch the end. They'll watch half of it and go, these girls are ridiculous. I'm, I'm out. And I feel like there's no, I, that kind of makes me angry because I'm like, if you, there's not many, there's not much, many choices for young Ukrainian girls. And if they stopped being feminine, they'd probably go back and be a stripper or have some work in the sex trade in Ukraine. And this is a much better like path for them, even if it's not ideal um so yeah i guess the, but there uh, are women's groups or feminist groups in the ukraine that they could join right a little bit but they're not that effective and i'm not sure it's working really i don't think i mean there's not that much funding from for organizations like that there's not uh it's really difficult to get a job where you p- get paid enough to live and are doing some kind of social work in ukraine it's really it's really hard do you are you um upset or offended when feminists tear down the film uh, and I would imagine the reaction is not uniform, right? I mean, there's yeah. probably a, 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 a wider range of responses from people in the women's movement, too, to this film, right? Well, yeah, it's more like the, the older kind of feminists who just tear them down without... I would love if they just offer some support or guidance or say, well, how about trying things that way or maybe be a little bit more inclusive? But just outright saying, just forget it, is ridiculous because these girls will go back to Ukraine where they have no future. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it upsets me when it's so just ridiculously kind of, I don't know, just... Polemical? Yeah, let's okay. let's say that. Um, Ukraine has been embroiled in dramatic political turmoil for the past six months. Uh, famine protesters have been involved in dramatic anti-Russia protests, for example, in, in Crimea. Do you give us a, a catch us up now on what you know about what has become of famine now in the last 12 months? Yeah, they're, they're so in this sort of basing famine international out of Paris and they're more, they're working in Europe a lot. Um, they're sort of not in Ukraine as much anymore. And I, I have questioned Inna on this, like why aren't we seeing more famine protests during the big kind of uh, battles that were in the Maidan? And she, her response was that really famine's role is to raise awareness and to get people to understand that something's wrong, to call, kind of call the people out who are corrupt or patriarchal or kind of keeping women down and she said Ukraine doesn't need us right now they're doing it on their own they're standing up for what they believe in and where we need to be is in countries where women don't aren't aware of their rights who aren't aware of what possibilities there are for women, for, for themselves out there so yeah her, they're sort of expanding to take over the world in a lot of ways and, yeah what um so this was your first feature documentary yeah. um, um what did you take from this in terms of lessons you want, you've learned for, for what you want to do next. Oh, so much. I mean, <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah, it's a pretty dense uh, subject matter, but it's. I mean, I just want to keep making films about women's rights, but it's, it's difficult. As soon as you say you want to make a film about women's rights, people go, "Ugh, I don't want to see a film about women's rights." So it's making films that are sexy and entertaining and exciting, but also have a message or have some kind of. Um, you know, like make women's lives a little better or sort of raise awareness like women do. Do people actually say that? I don't want to see a film about women's rights? Uh, I don't think they say that, but there is you definitely... You feel like there's an attitude like that? Definitely, yeah. Even I don't want to go if they, somebody says... Oh, you don't want to go to your own film. film. <laughs> no, my film's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's not a women's rights film. It is a film about women, but 
I mean, it's not, it's not, it doesn't have an agenda necessarily. It's exploring these girls and their lives and this movement. Do you have a subject for your next film? Uh, yeah, but I, I can't say what it is. You can't is. talk about it? No, not yet. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's, I mean, it's a really compelling film. There's no question about that. I mean, no matter where people stand on Femin, uh, it's the, 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 the access that you end up getting by embedding yourselves there for, you know, for 14 months is remarkable. Uh, and it's quite a story. And um, it makes a lot of sense that it's getting the buzz it is. Thanks so much for coming in the studio. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Australian filmmaker Kitty Green.